for our 43rd church anniversary, we have chosen a theme, the book of 1 Samuel, 7th chapter. I'm going to read from verse number 8. The children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb, offered it for a burnt offering, only unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day for the Philistines. They discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out and missed for and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came to Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mithra and Shem and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto had the Lord helped us. Indeed, for four and three years, God has helped us as a church, as a ministry, and personally, God has helped me my family, and all that we have. As scripture says, except the Lord builds the house, they who build it labor in vain. I'd like for you to look with me at a number of Bible characters and how God helped them. I think of Abraham, of Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham. As Abraham was there with Sarah, they had no children. No see. But most importantly was the fact that Abraham was willing to obey God and to leave his family, his country, his culture, the environment he grew up in, and to go to a place that God will show him. God didn't show him where he was going, but where he will show him. Abraham was obedient to the Lord and followed God's instruction went into a land, strange place. And Abraham at least was wondering what would happen to him and his wife. They had no hair, no seed. But God took him outside one day and showed him the stars up in heaven and the sun upon the seashore. And God covenant with him and told him that as much as this sand here and the stars up in heaven, God says he will bless him and make his seed to be great. We know me sing with the children in Sunday school, Abraham had many sons and many sons at Abraham. God blessed Abraham and Sarah in their old age. God opened up Sarah's womb and blessed them. So God was a faithful God to Abraham. Even Abraham was called a friend of God. When Abraham needed a favor from God, God also was there to help him. God helped Abraham. His nephew Lot was in trouble, was in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham cried out to the Lord, asking God if there'd be 50 righteous in there, if God would spare that city. God said, yes, if there's 50 righteous, I'll save the city. But they weren't. You know, we're not even up to 10 probably righteous in there. But God was faithful and God helped Abraham and protected Abraham's nephew Lot, brought him out of the city before destroying it. God was his helper. God helped Abraham in many other cases when he told the people that his wife was his sister and was really his wife. They were going to take her to become his, uh, his wife. But thank God, God was faithful in delivering him. Not only Abraham, but Abraham, the other patriarchs, Isaac. God bless Isaac. And gave him a beautiful wife, Rebecca. God was faithful to him and blessed him. And out of that union came Esau and Jacob. Jacob was a man that did many things wrong. But at the end, when he cried unto God, asking God to help him when he was in distress, was in trouble, because he heard his brother was coming to meet him, he cried out to God. And God touched him, and God not only touched him, but God changed his name and called him instead of Jacob, he called him Israel. 
and he became a friend of God. Life's journey many times starts off in different ways for many of us. I think of Joseph, a teenager, young man, found himself in a predicament with his brethren. They took that young man, they sold him, end up in Egypt as a slave, lied upon, found himself in prison, but God was faithful. God helped Joseph, that young man. God eventually promoted him to become the prime minister, so to speak, there in Egypt. God blessed Joseph and helped him. God helped Joseph also that when his brethren came, that he was able to forgive them. And so Joseph prospered. He went from pit to the palace. God can help you. It doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in. God can help you this evening. I think of Ruth, a young woman, who ended up becoming a widow, lost her husband. But thank God, God helped her. He helped her to transition, left her country, went to another place, Bethlehem, Judea. And as she went down there, God blessed her and gave her a husband. God was faithful to her. And God answered her prayer and helped her. And through her lineage came our Messiah. Yes, God is still helping. I think of young David. He was a shepherd boy. But God helped David to kill the lion. God helped David that in spite of the fact that he had to face Goliath, he was able to, with God's help, to kill Goliath, who came out and terrorized the people of God. God was a David. God protected David and his family many times over and blessed him. His friend Jonathan was a very good friend to him and Jonathan helped him to be able to make it. His son Solomon took over the reign and began to reign in Israel. And even Solomon prayed and asked God, he says, God, please give me wisdom to rule his people. And God helped him. He had an incident with the two mothers whose baby had died, one of their mothers' baby had died during the night. And they came to Solomon claiming that the one baby belonged to both of them. But God was so faithful, he was able to show Solomon. Solomon took a sword and was about to cut the baby in half to divide the child between the two mothers. The real mother jumped out and said, no, please rather give her the child. Even if I can't have my child, please let her have the child. And he was able to recognize that the true mother was the one who cried out to him. Yes, God was faithful. He was faithful to Paul the apostle when he was in a ship and they were nearly at the point of dying. They encountered some very bad weather, but God gave Paul a word, tell him not to be afraid, that they all would be saved. God spared Paul's life. I think also not only of Paul, but I think of us as the believers that John promised us that when he the comforter is come, he will lead and guide us into all truth. He will show us things to come. The Holy Spirit will pray through us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will become, replace Jesus, take his place. He said, I will send you another comforter, another helper. Thank God, a New Testament believer as a helper. That helper is the Holy Spirit of God that comes alongside of us 24-7. Whether you're in the bathroom, the kitchen, on the subway, on the bus, the Holy Spirit is there to lead you. Many times He will tell you what to do. He will steer you away from danger. How many times I thank God, the Lord was faithful to protect my life and cover because I listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. The Holy Spirit came upon the other 20 in Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came upon the twelve disciples that Paul spoke to. Yes, the Holy Spirit led Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary trip. 
where he said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. He was helping them to get started on a missionary trip. Paul heard a Macedonian call, the voice speaking and was willing to go and to help. Yes, and I want to say, my friend, you might be a sinner. I want to say there is help for you. God sent his son, Jesus, and the blood of Jesus can cleanse you and make you whole and wash you from your sins. There's a young man in the Bible by the name of Jabez. Jabez came from a very poor background, but he prayed and asked God if God would bless him indeed. And God heard his prayer and blessed Jabez, and he became a great man. I want to say this no matter where you are. You can select a song, the right song says in the psalm. I will lift up my eyes to the hills, for whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Yes, friends, God is a present help in the time of trouble. You can trust him. I want to say, number one, if he knows of many of these people that from birth and from childhood, God had his hand upon their lives all the way up to the adulthood. God had his hand on Moses' life. While his mother was still pregnant with him, Pharaoh had issued a decree that all the male babies, the midwives, were to kill them. And when he came out from the womb, God not only protected him in the womb, but when he came out from his mother's womb, God protected him. God was faithful to let him exist in the Nile River, and his sister watched him. She was helping to take care of him. God was faithful not only with helping him, with his sister to protecting him. All the snakes, the crocodile, and everything else might have been around him, all the evil stuff. God protected and kept Moses. God not only took him, took care of him in the Nile, but God made him to be able to go into Pharaoh's palace. And God took care of him, Pharaoh's daughter, took care of him in the palace. God protected him in Pharaoh's house. God helped him. Even when he left there and found himself in the backside of the desert, God was still with Moses. Yes, friends. God is our helper. He's been our help in ages past and he's our eternal hope. I want to say that we need to come to our blessings because God has blessed us in many ways. In times of distress, times of going through different things, we thank God that he's been there. Let me ask you this evening, where does your help come from? So when it says, where does my help come from? My help cometh from the Lord. Where does your help come from? From your best friend? From your co-worker? From your neighbor? From your own intellect? The Bible says, vain is the help of man. Our help comes from God, from the Lord. God is our helper. He's our refuge and strength. He's a present help in the time of trouble. What help tonight do you need? What help do you need tonight? What do you need help with? Your finances? The Bible says, God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I believe some of you, the reason you have trouble with your finances because you're not honoring God with your tithes and offering. If you honor God, God will honor you. Put God first. In Malachi, the Bible says, wherein we have robbed God. He says, wherein have we robbed God? It says in our tithes and our offering. Some people, it's not with your tithes and offering. Some people have bad money management. They don't manage their finances properly. Some people spend more than they can, that they have income. But I want to say God can help you financially, bring you out of that situation and help you to see your way, pay your bills and to be able to enjoy life. What do you need help with? Are you sick in your body? I want to say God, where it says in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Yes. Your help comes from the Lord. God is our healer. The Bible says in James, 
If any sick amongst us, let him call the elders of the church. Let him anoint him with oil, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. Yes, God is still our helper. He's our healer. I want to say, what else do you need help with? Maybe your marriage, you need help with your marriage. I want to say, what God are joined together. Let no man put asunder. Maybe you need help with your communication with one another. Maybe you need to pray with each other. Maybe it's a case of forgiveness. You're holding on to something that's happened in a relationship. Forgive by the grace of God. Because the Bible says we should forgive seven to times seven. And I want to say that many times we all come short. But we need to forgive one another so healing can come. And our relationships can be restored. What do you need help with? Your children? I have such children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Yes, but it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from the ways of the Lord. I know it's not easy as a mother, as a father, or as a grandparent, or a guardian, raising children in these days. But I want to encourage you, pray for them, call their name before the Lord, know them at all. Pray when they go out, pray when they come in. Commit them to the Lord. You can't watch them 24-7, except the Lord keeps the city, except the Lord watches over them. We cannot keep them. Pray for them. Commit them to the Lord. Encourage them. Read the word of God with them and for them. And believe God that wherever they are, whether they're using drugs, whether they're in a gang, pray for them that God will save them. God can turn any life around. There's nothing too hard for God to do. Maybe you, what do you need help with? Maybe you have unforgiveness. Maybe something happened to you as a young person. Maybe somebody violated you. Somebody did you something wrong. You have an unforgiveness spirit. I want to say release them so that you can be set free. Because whom the Son of God set free shall be free indeed. Forgive so you can move on. Let God restore you. If it's your relationship with your relatives, if you need God to help you with your ministry, I want to say whatever help you need, our help cometh from the Lord. God is your helper, He is your strength, He is your source. And tonight, if you trust Him, I know He'll make a way for you. The chorus says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth thee, He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. For the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul even forevermore. My help, my help, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Yes, friends, God is your helper. God is there with you or for you. Call upon him. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call upon the Lord. Call upon Jesus. 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 Help me, Jesus. Yes, friends, call upon your help. Call the Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me, Lord. Yes, friends, we live in desperate times. Whatever your situation is, call upon the Lord. I know if you dial 911 
but I want to say call upon J-E-S-U-S. He's the Lord and he's the best. And he will see you through by the grace of God. So tonight, I'd like to pray with you and pray for you. And ask God's blessing. I knew that the Lord would help you. That God will see you through. God will make a way for you. And that the children of Israel, God help them to overcome their enemies, the Philistines. God turned a great thunder upon them. And they were discomfited. And the children of Israel had no more war with them. They had peace. Samuel, the prophet of God, made a memorial to remind them of the faithfulness of God. I want to say when God helps you, give an offering, make a sacrificial gift, do something to show that this year is a memorial I'm making and a tribute to God, for God healing me, for God blessing my finances, for God restoring my backslidden child for God healing my marriage, for God helping me on my job. Do it, friend, and God will honor you as you trust him. Father, I pray tonight, touch those who are listening this evening. Father, you know the help they need right now. Be their helper right now, Lord. Bring them out from whatever situation they're facing. Let them know just the way you delivered Daniel from the lion's den. You have Abraham brought him to a strange country and blessed him. You have Moses, Lord, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. You blessed Joseph in a strange country. You have David, Lord, in spite of his failure to rise up, you have anointed him to be king of Israel. God, you have Paul the apostle on his missionary journey protected him. God, I thank you for keeping my life also. Thank you for your healing touch. Thank you for healing all those who need a touch tonight, we pray. Father, those who need to be safe, let them surrender their lives to you right now. I'm going to ask you, friend, if you'd like to give your heart to the Lord to pray after me. Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. May God richly bless you and yours. And thanks for listening. May the Word of God be an encouragement to you and build your faith, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night. God bless. Bye.